What's up, you guys? Steven here for Off Shelf Movie Night to talk to you about physical media, about Blu-rays, 4Ks, and sometimes even DVDs. Yeah, there's still movies that only come on DVD, such as my movie, Family of Fear, currently on DVD through Amazon and most other major distributors, but also on Tubi to watch for free. So check it out. Anyway, if you're new to this channel and you are a physical media collector or you want to be a physical media collector or you just like talking about movies, you're in the right spot. Hit that subscribe button, that notification bell. If you like the video, hit the like. It'd be really great. Sharing it also, always a great thing. Helps the channel out, helps get the word out, helps us pop up in the algorithm, all that stuff. Anyway, even though I did just go through a big spiel about physical media, I'm going to talk to you about movies in the theater. Because once in a while I like to do an update on my Pushing 100 project. Pushing 100 is my project where I'm trying to see 100 new release films in theater in one year. So as of this recording, I believe I'm at 71 films. So I've got 29 movies to go before the end of the year. So as we record, this is the this is, uh, middle of October, so it's I've got a lot to see. But I did see three films the other day, and, and I will talk about those Briefly, now I'm not going to, you know, go too long-winded about it. Now, if you want to stay really up to date on this project and follow it, there's two good ways to do that outside of this channel. And one is my Letterbox. That's Culture Smash on Letterbox. Um, I try to post fairly quickly after seeing each film. I like to get my thoughts out right after the movie as best as I can. So I'll do at least a, a star rating, but most of the time I try to actually type a few words of review in there. So that's a good way to stay up to date. And then the other thing is my TikTok, OTS Movies. I usually post on TikTok while I'm at the theater, either before or after going to each movie that I see. Typically do multiple movies in a day, at least two, sometimes up to four. So... Yeah, that's how you can follow along in this crazy ass journey that I have. It's and, and I'm doing it because I just, you know, after the ordeal that we went through with pandemic and being locked down, I just want to remind people that it matters to see movies in the theater the way they were intended, to to have that hive mind experience, that communal experience. Movies movies play different in theater. When you can't sit there and surf on your phone the whole time or pause it when you want to take a break. You have to finish what you started when you're in the theater. And it, and it means something. It matters. So that's why I'm doing it. Anyway, I saw three films the other day. And I'm going to just give you a quick rundown on my experience. The first one I'll talk about, and I'm not going to talk about this one. This is I'm going to talk about this one the least, and that's Halloween Ends. Because I've done an entire video about it. If you haven't seen it, I'll put a link in the description. You can go back and do, I did 30 minutes on that movie. I did about 10 minutes of the video, spoiler free, and I'm probably another 20 minutes of it being an in-depth discussion with spoilers. So feel free to go and check that out. I'll just suffice it to say that I gave it half a star on Letterbox. That's the lowest rating I could give it and still have it considered a rating. Hated that movie. I did not like it. Jamie Lee Curtis is back, and she's the only redeeming part of the movie, literally. The rest of the cast mostly sucks. The story direction that they took was a bad decision and very poorly executed on top of it being a bad decision. Very little redeeming about this movie. It's not good. And hopefully this ends the assault on what is a horror icon in Michael Myers. Leave it be. No one can do it anymore. You know, John Carpenter broke the mold with the first film, and I, we should be done. The third film is also really great, but it's not a Michael Myers movie. If you want to do a new anthology, that'd be cool. You know, there's these things, uh, a Star Wars story. Why don't you do something, a Star Wars story, and start getting some great horror filmmakers to do one-off horror movies? That'd be, now, see, that's gold right there. I just gave you gold. But anyway... Bad movie. Didn't like it. Did not like it. The movie I saw following Halloween Ends was Smile. And I think it was a good thing for Smile that I saw Halloween Ends first. It made Smile feel a little better, honestly. People are talking about how they're surprised that this movie is good and how it's actually, you know, really good and all this stuff. Is it streaming that has destroyed people's expectations of what is good? Smile is not terrible. 
it's not the worst thing I've seen. Also, it's not that good. Smile, if you told me Smile was made in 2006 and it was a remake of a J-horror film, I'd believe you. Because that's what Smile feels like. It feels like that late 90s to early mid 2000s J-horror softcore horror movie remake that Hollywood was doing at that time. You know, it fit right in with the the remake of The Grudge. Uh, the only good movie from that era is The Ring. That was a pretty decent remake. But but yeah, that's what this movie really feels like. It's f- formulaic, you know, in every way. Every beat is predictable. I'm just also kind of over the victim seeing things that no one else sees. It's so overplayed. We've been doing that for since there were horror movies. It's done already. You know, it's cringy at this point. And the, you know, after seeing Terrifier 2, and honestly, a little bit of Halloween Ends, seeing practical effects in a horror movie is so fresh feeling and delightful. Seeing a CGI laden thing that is smile is sad. This is your PG rated, you know, low expect you know the horror movie for people with no expectations i guess cuz i had i expected at least a reasonable movie based off the reviews i've been seeing and it's it's you know it's not that good you guys it's 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 barely passable it's barely passable so the movie basically let's see it stars i, I did want to mention that it stars um um I want to see how to say her name. See if I can figure it out. Um, it's not... Is it Sozie? Su- Susie? What is it? It's Kevin Bacon's daughter is in this movie. And she's fine. She's fine. I'm guessing that's... Is that his daughter? That plays Rose? Um, Yeah, because she's fine. She's not bad. Her acting is fine. It also stars the delightful... Robin Wiegert as a uh, therapist. Now, I know her. She's been in a ton of TV. But I know her as Calamity Jane from Deadwood. Such a very different character from what she normally plays. But I like her. And every, every time I see her, I'm happy to see her. She's just fun. Um, Yeah, and nobody else that really stands out acting-wise. It's like... And, and nobody's particularly bad in this movie or particularly good. This is just... You know, mediocre CGI PG horror. It's, you know, it's startle scares. There's there's a difference in being scared and just being startled. And a lot of people don't know, don't understand that. But you can be startled pretty easily. But to actually be scared is a whole different thing. But this vibe of sort of late 90s, early 2000s PG horror, J-horror remake-y feeling stuff... There's really only been one in the last few years that succeeded, and that was Invisible Man, and that was because of Elizabeth Moss. She elevated the crap out of that movie. Oh, oh, I, I have the trailer playing for for Smile here in front of me, and it's got some of the worst CGI fire that I've seen since Firestarter, which was also really bad. So I'm going to say it's a pass for this movie. Don't waste your time on it. Maybe watch it when it's streaming somewhere. This feels like it's deserving of streaming you know, if you're someone who's like afraid of clowns, for example, this movie might have impact on you because of the smile thing, and maybe it's just a creepy, you know, dead eyes kind of thing. I don't know. It's it's okay. It's utterly forgettable. I, I don't understand the hype. I really do think streaming has destroyed people's expectations for what's good. All right, so I also saw Lyle Lyle Crocodile. And that comes from the one of the directors, uh, or the director of Chris of uh, uh, Office Christmas Party. If that helps you get an idea for where we're going, um, Lyle Lyle Crocodile is so formulaic and predictable. There is no surprise in here, none. It stars um, the delightful and gorgeous Constance Wu. I I know you guys know her from Crazy Rich Asians and other things. I This is my first time actually watching a movie that she's in, I believe, and she is beautiful and delightful, and I loved her in this. 
Javier Bardem, who is always also delightful, even when he's a villain. He is a lot of fun in this. Um, and it, uh, let's see, Sean Mendez plays Lyle, and he does all the singing parts, obviously, and he's great. It also stars Brent Gelman as Mr. Grumps. You will know him most recently from Stranger Things. So basically, it's the story of Javier Bardem is a showman, and he finds, discovers a singing crocodile. Well, this crocodile can't sing in public, and it ends up bankrupting or getting him in, giving, getting Javier Bardem's character in trouble, and he leaves. Like, I guess to hide from debt or to go make money or whatever. Well, while he's gone, a family takes over his house. Uh, and the kid who is displaced, you know, because they made a major move, discovers Lyle. And discovers that Lyle can sing. And, you know, Lyle impacts and changes and opens up what are really closed people within this family unit. And it becomes their adventure. There, again, as I said, there's nothing surprising in here. But it's also for a family. Like, if you want to take your kid, your kids are going to enjoy this movie. The songs are catchy and cute. They're well-performed. Shawn Mendes, obviously, is a great singer. Javier Bardem does okay. And, you know, I, I didn't, you know, script-wise, I would normally not like this movie because, like, there's no surprises in here. But for a kid's movie, for little kids, I found it kind of joyful, you know? It's kind of joyful. Kind of like, um, um, Marcel the Shell in that way. Marcel the Shell probably had a little bit better script, but it was joyful, you know? And, and this movie feels that way, too. Uh, it's not something I'm going to ever revisit, but I don't regret it. It was the best thing I saw in that block of films, my three-film block. And if you've got kids... Or you're just in the mood to hear some catchy songs and see some some cute dances, then give it a go. Give it a go. It's not. It's it's not that bad. It's. I mean, it's. When I say not that bad, it's kind of an insult, I guess. But it's not great. It's not iconic. Um, but it's okay. I mean, you know. It's it's okay. It was you know I enjoyed it more than I thought, and I think that's the thing. And what a weird three films that was. To see Halloween Ends, see Smile, and then see Lyle Lyle Crocodile. It's a day of mediocre films, to be honest with you. But one is really bad, one is passable, and one is better than I thought. So the day increasingly, I guess, got better as I got through those three films. Anyway, that's all I'm going to say. It's a short video. Um, hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you thought of these movies. If you've seen them and let's have a conversation i love to hear differing opinions especially when it comes to the quite divisive halloween ends and then you know check that review out if you want more detail on my feelings because when i tell you that something is not good i come with receipts i'm not one of these um critics that just says no it's not good because i said it's not good i'm going to give you receipts so that's in that video anyway Till next we meet, pull something cool off the shelf, share it with your friends and family, and remind them why physical media is the best way to watch films and TV. I'll see you guys on the next one.